uh, the details of what documents you have constructed, where they are on your blog, and the procedure for filing them. Okay, well, there are two things you can do. You can either file for an injunction, which is asking the court to order the government or to ban the government from, from distributing these vaccines, and that's a civil case. Or you can hand in criminal charges, and Elizabeth did both. Elizabeth Book handed in criminal charges at her local police station, and her local police are looking at these charges. At first, they kind of laughed at her. In her last email, she said they actually have passed them on to the criminal investigation department, and that's what you want. You want your local police to, to just be reading the evidence and to be aware of what's going on. Um, you can download these from the... Um, from the, uh, the Swiss website, which has my documents because my blog was being hacked, and that's Wake News. Um, the documents are listed, and you can just download them and file them at your police station or to your local court. Um, Wait, so that's, which, blog, which blog are the documents on? Aren't they on your Bird Flu 666? No, the, the, there's a link to them. They're on Wake News. This is a, a website in Switzerland. Okay, please And spell I it. always put the... Um, Wait, I, you got to spell it. you got to spell it because people okay, have Okay, um, I think it's W-A-K-E-N-E-W-S, mm -hmm. Wake News. And it's, okay. it's always on my post. It's always there. I have put it okay, up great. there. And, and um, isn't there another, like a header sheet that's also available um, that they can fill out in terms of their individual name and such, and that they're they're presenting these documents um, on their behalf, correct? Uh, you you have to get that at your local court. Each state or county has its own criminal complaint form and civil complaint form. Okay. So if you're filing the criminal charges, you need to fill out the criminal complaint form and name a U.S. defendant. If you're filing the civil, uh, uh, the injunction, you need to fill out the civil complaint form. Okay. And I hope that the attorney that's listening will be checking that out as well, uh, because we need to have attorneys involved with us as well. Not that you need an attorney, folks. You don't need an attorney to do this. But, see, once the attorneys realize they're dead too, then some of them may say, you know what, we know the courts are corrupt, but maybe it's time for us to do the right thing. And that's what I'm hoping will happen. Because, in fact, that's what they will realize, especially once they see those WHO memos. And we have to make sure we get those WHO memos off to Elizabeth so she can bring the, the police station uh, another little package and say, oh, by the way, you might want to check these out as well. Yeah, okay. and can I just say one uh, last thing? And, and that's a big thank you to Joanne Kramer and David McLucas, who started a sort of face group, a Facebook group which has a very ambitious and well thought through plan to stop mass vaccination in the USA. I think about 700 people have volunteered to, um, to act in, to stop this. So a big, big thank you to them for taking it upon themselves and showing so much initiative. And with Elizabeth's book and other people are emailing me and telling me they're filing these criminal charges, there's definitely movement here occurring. Yes. In, indeed, and, and I plan on doing that as well. I haven't had a chance to as yet, and the sheriff in my county is a high-level Freemason, but that's okay. I'm going to do it anyways. And, see, all of us have to do this, folks. Um, once enough people come out of the woodwork and start doing this, they can't just laugh you away, uh, especially, like I said, when they read these documents and they realize, you know, a lot of these people think, well, we're part of the, we're part of the, the, the team that's going to, you know, be protected. You know, what I like to inform them is evil is evil even to its own. That's one of the reasons why they're telling different police officers that they're going to be moving them to another location. This is happening all over the country. They're being told that, you know, get ready, you're going to be moved for at least 30 days to another location. Well, why are they telling all the police to move to another location? Why don't they just stay where they are and deal with whatever's coming? The reason is because they know that the people um, that live in that location, the quote-unquote peace officers, may not want to uh, promote the killing of their neighbors. So they're moving them around in order to promote this. They've got all their ducks in a row, or so they think. But it's going to be funny how it all works out. And, yes, we have to support everybody that's doing anything to help stop this. Um, of course, there's people that are purporting that we sign petitions and things of that nature, Folks, I think we're way beyond the petition stage. 
Uh, they're planning on unleashing this mid-October or so they say, although I think there's going to be a lot of interesting things happening starting in September, especially September 9th. So we have to get moving. But the most important thing that I want to tell the listeners is you have to develop a backbone. They're coming to kill you, and you need to say no. And people say to me, well, what's that going to do? Because they can just take you off to a quarantine camp. Well, they can do whatever they want. But you see, if enough of us just say no, if every person just said no, they would be standstill. They would have nothing they could possibly do. So anyways, um, I would like to bring uh, Dr. Jordan on, but I'm hoping you can stay on the line, uh, Jane, if you can, um, to contribute further. Can you do that? I, I, I'm afraid I have to go. Uh, it's, okay. All right. Is, is well, that okay? But I just wanted to say goodbye to Patrick and to Patricia, and uh, I'll be emailing you all soon, very soon anyway. So. Okay. And, and, yes, and you can also listen to the archive. I'm going to have it on my, sh uh, my yes. website as soon as I Great. can. And I thanks for really everything well. that you've done, Jane. And, and thanks for those memos, Patrick. They're just wonderful. They put the nail in the coffin of who. So. Yes, they do. Uh, <laughs> island. We're, 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 we're going to take down these monsters, okay? We are going to do it, all of us together. So thank you, Jane, and stay safe. I know that you've got a lot of uh, higher forces watching over you, so keep up the good work, and we'll be in touch. Thanks. Okay. All right, Dr. Jordan. Um, hey. Now tell us, please... Uh, how they're going to be forcing or trying to force canine influenza vaccines on our little critters and how this whole thing started and, you know, the whole thing that we were discussing this morning. Okay. I do have some very important information. And the first thing I wanted to explain to people about this information with Baxter, the bird flu in Indonesia that was so bad, the strains are H, H3N2 and H5N1. The H3N2 makes it very human-to-human -human transmissible. The thing that Baxter did was they mixed that with the seasonal flu virus, both the H3N2 and the H5N1. And as Jane reported, they received the 72 kilos of this purposely mixed pandemic flu soup from the World Health Organization. And that's what they need to understand, first of all. The next thing I wanted to let them know is that Emory University had already produced a paper that said the overuse of veterinary vaccines was having huge impact on public health issues, that there was emerging public health issues. In other words, the people were getting sick from the use and overuse of veterinary vaccinations. And they listed things like Bordetella, rabies, the rabies virus that's out there that they're seeding the environment with for the wildlife is actually reverting and has caused problems in at least one human being. So the problem is that these viruses that they administer to the animals are having some effect on people. Now, another um, very good person to look up is Dr. Marc Giard. He is an MD that for the country of France did 36,000 bankable hours on the study of hepatitis B, and he went and filed the charges that the WHO, the World Health Organization, needed to be looked at critically for criminal charges, not just that scientific flaw, because they were making recommendations for vaccinations that they shouldn't be doing. In other words, the World Health Organization was conspiring to use vaccinations that we were not uh, worth the risk on taking. And his country of France found out the hard way what the hepatitis B vaccine did. But in that paper, he also lists that the World Health Organization was taking a veterinary problem, which was the bird, bird flu at the time, and making it into a public health issue. And that has to do, again, back with them having the strains of the flu. Uh, the um, World Health Organization is now through some um, shenanigans that Baxter pulled with the country of Indonesia has the most lethal strains of the bird flu. So now we have the H3N2, the H5N1, and we have problems with this new flu that's coming out being required for dogs, and it's called the canine influenza. Now, there's some interesting things I want to tell you about this. It's classified as H3N8, and this is a very rare event that happened, and I'm always curious about rare events because I don't believe anything happens by mistake. But what happened was, this is, they're saying it's a type of adaptive evolution. 
the entire genetic